Hey everybody, my name's Jesse. And I'm Jason. And today, we're going to look at one of the hydrologic wonders of West Lafayette, Celery Bog. Throughout the 20th century, immigrants from Northern Holland occupied the area that is now known as Celery Bog Nature Area. Noticing the peat-rich soil was very similar to that they had become accustomed to, these immigrants became farmers, cultivating a number of crops, yes, including celery. However, the peat in the soil has a high carbon content, making the soil capable of burning in low moisture conditions. Because of this, the hot Indiana summers caused the soil to smolder and eventually burn. The farms were completely destroyed, but the dead and decomposing plant material from the crops helped contribute to the peat levels in the soil, and the celery bog was born. Bogs are one of the four main types of wetlands, along with marshes, fens, and swamps. Marshes are usually nutrient rich, and swamps are great environments for large woody vegetation. Both marshes and swamps can have standing water in their respective ecosystems. Bogs and fens are almost opposite from each other, in that bogs have high peat content and poor soil, whereas fens have less peat and more plant life. But one characteristic they do share is that they commonly do not have standing water. In bogs, the soil is often completely saturated, but not so oversaturated to the point where there is standing water. So when we look at our celery bog, we see that there is indeed lots of standing water. So is celery bog even a bog? The answer is yes. The fact that there's standing water in celery bog usually leads to the misconception that celery bog should actually be called celery marsh. However, if we remember how the bog was formed, we know that it's high in peak concentration, which leads to its correct classification as a bog. The main influx of water into a bog is precipitation, with groundwater and surface water inflows being comparatively negligible. West Lafayette receives approximately 38 inches of rainfall every year, so that rainfall greatly contributes to the standing water that we see in celery bog today. There's low infiltration into the soil because the soil remains saturated. Because of the open water and small vegetation, evapotranspiration dominates as the main water outflow. Bogs would be classified as soil group D because of their very low infiltration rates due to a permanently high water table. These low infiltration rates lead to the ponding that we see on the surface and can even lead to runoff. Overall, celery bog consists of five wetland basins. These wetland basins contribute to carbon dioxide sequestration and biomass generation. This is beneficial to the environment because it helps mitigate the carbon footprint of the local area and helps support rich biodiversity. Thank you all so much for joining us on our adventure through Celery Bog Nature Area. We hope that it was informative and that maybe one day you'll find yourself here and see it all in real life. Bye! <laughs>